So many of you are aware that I draw with my hands, but not many are aware of why I am so taken with this process. It means a lot to me to share my story with you tonight. From my early years, I felt a calling to artistic expression. I had a natural sense of expressing internal states through images of the human form. Through the human form, I found a way to speak a universal language, transcending differences of culture and time. When I went to art school in New York City, I opened up to the abstract and conceptual modes that were prevalent at that time. These were esoteric languages, accessible really only through art world philosophizing. I found a certain fulfillment in doing this kind of work. It was somewhat of a contemplative process, but underneath there was a yearning for something more. One day on my last year of school, I was coming to a place where I was just yearning to create images again. I thought I'd like to draw some faces, but it felt like a real taboo in the art world in New York at that time. So I took a little piece of paper, and I scribbled these silly little faces, and I actually felt like I was doing a dirty drawing. It was that <laughs> embarrassing. But I did it, and I but I, you know, I cringed and I tucked the dirty doodle away, but I kept it. <clears throat> so, um, but in retrospect, I've looked back on that moment and realized that that moment of giving myself permission to act on my core impulse was the moment that a, 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 a seed was germinated inside of me. There was another seminal time, an experience I had in my um, school's rural campus, I saw a willow tree by the pond, and its leaves were drifting gently in the sand. I was lit with joy because I saw that the leaves were etching patterns in the sand. And it felt like I was seeing nature in the act of drawing. This lit me in a way that um, brought forth a sense that I was longing to find a more natural way to draw. This search that had been going on under the surface all those years burst above the surface on the last day of my last year in art school. <laughs> it was the very last day, and I was helping a friend in the print shop, and they have pieces of glass, and I was going to help him clean up. And um, in that moment before cleaning, right before wiping, I had an impulse to play. So I move my fingertips on the back of the paper towel, something like that, and saw that lines had come directly from my fingertips. <sighs> this blew me open, actually like wide open. And I started laughing hysterically, crawling around the paper, finding more paper towels, doing more drawings. And then I realized I could also draw faces. So silly faces like that one up there. And um, so they were a natural extension of my being right on the paper. All of this was so much like the willow tree with the direct expression in the sand. <sighs> Those faces also that I had doodled months before now had a wide open channel. Now on the surface, it seemed like childlike play. And I was kind of being a little hysterical. But underneath, I felt something profound and powerful happening. I felt suspended between the ancient imprints of hands on the cave wall and some future in which this way of drawing with the hands would be able to reflect a more fluid and translucent human consciousness. I felt called to share this process. I knew it wasn't just for my own personal use. And to do this, I had a sense I'd have to find another path as an artist, another way to live my life. But in, at that time, the first thing I had to do was pour my own soul into touch drawing. In this heightened yet um, somewhat vulnerable time, I was wandering around New York. I was very open. Touch drawing was my lifeline. 
Whenever I felt fear or confusion, I would turn to the drawing board. Each image was a direct impression of my inner sensations on the page. As I moved through a series of drawings, it was as if I was sculpting my psyche. And after a series, I would look through the drawings and see a record of all my inner changes. Through this process, I developed a deep trust in the wisdom of the body and being in the moment. And paradoxically, this allowing myself to just flow with ever-changing sensation helped me to access a core of stability and wholeness. My images became more substantial over time. I became more articulate at giving form to the inner states of my psyche. There was a natural or innate, um, innate wisdom to each series of drawings. And I began to access a level that felt more archetypal and transpersonal. After many years of pouring myself into process, 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 I began to focus more on each individual image, slowly rubbing them into form. I explored ways to add layers of color and bring them more fully into presence. Finally, they felt like they were in a ripe state and ready to be shared. Now, since I had left the art world and hadn't really developed connections of sharing my art in galleries, I had a sense that I should explore other ways to share these images. A series of circumstances led me to publish them as a deck of cards called Soul Cards. And there was no written interpretation. Basically, it was images. But people could develop a very intimate relationship with these images. And the strength of their response and the broad range, range of uses confirmed this choice to find another way to share my work. I also felt a pull away from the studio. Um, I wanted to find a way to feel more connected and serve a larger purpose in my work. I began to immerse myself in conferences and events in which emergent cultural you know, awareness is being articulated. I would sit with all these great speakers and listen and translate their images and their content into drawings on the page. I was carried by the power of the collective in this kind of work. And doing this kind of work, which I still do, brings me back to that spontaneous aspect of touch drawing. It is very intense and yet somehow effortless. I also developed a way to work individually one-on-one -on -one with people, inspired by their presence to create a series of drawings. I sit with someone and I dedicate the session to create images that will benefit their soul life. And then I dive into the void, and I follow the impulses that I'm feeling in that void and bring them into form. And all I can do is trust that these images will have significance to the person I'm drawing for. In this work, I'm really called to tap some of the deepest sources I know how to access. Through all of these years, I have never wavered in my commitment to share touch drawing. I developed a way to hold space so people could have a deep experience of the process. The original sense of the potential of this process is confirmed every time I witness someone gazing into the inner mirror of the drawing board. It's confirmed when I see hands dancing on the paper, unleashing healing forces through this pure act of creation. And it's confirmed in the joy and fulfillment that resonates through the group at the end of the session. My original sense was that touch drawing should be shared freely and opening with no, openly with no restrictions. And I've really tried to stay true to that impulse. But the applications of the process are so much more than I ever could have imagined at that first time I did it. More than an art form, touch drawing is an integrative, therapeutic, 
creative and spiritual practice. It serves to be used by people of all ages. When I introduce it to someone who works in the helping professions, I encourage them to find, to use their own expertise to develop ways to bring it into the work that they do with people, very uniquely depending on the way they work with people. It's now being facilitated in so many different settings. It's being used with people who have Parkinson's, AIDS, cancer, and the caregivers, and healthcare workers, and very powerful in grief groups. Touch drawing is also particularly appealing to people who have autism. I've heard amazing stories. And also people who have different physical abilities because they can use their hands without a tool. Touch drawing is used by people who have no artistic confidence at all, as well as by artists who want to tap deeper sources. In the birthing of images from within the soul, I feel that touch drawing is aligned with the rising of the feminine principle in our time. And in these times, when so much of our creative energy is being focused through digital um, technology, touch drawing brings a balance, relying only on the biological human hand as it touches paper. Touch drawing is a creative spiritual practice and a way to bring the inner child out to play. <laughs> and in that spirit, I'm going to do one drawing for you. So. <laughs> so this is ink. Rolling it smooth. <laughs> 